Starting off this countdown, we have the giant cannibal shark. Sounds like something straight out of a horror movie. Honestly, maybe it is. So in 2003, scientists tagged a nine foot long great white shark. They did this in order to study the temperature changes in the ocean. Here's the thing. Several months later, the tag washed up on shore. The shark, nowhere to be seen. They checked the information on the tag and that's when they were shocked. About four months after the tag was put on the shark, it dove to around 1900 feet. They believe that's because the shark was attacked and eaten by something. But what creature in the ocean is going around eating a nine foot long bright white shark? They still don't know. It could be a massive sea creature that we haven't found yet. Or they think it might be an even bigger shark, making it a massive cannibal shark. If you're not afraid of the ocean yet, then this for sure has done it for you. Coming in at number nine, we have the lost city of Atlantis. There's a city that lies sunken underwater just off the coast of the Japanese island Yonaguni, making it Japan's very own Atlantis. Many people believe that the city is around 5,000 years old. There are complete pyramids, ruins of castles, structures etched with faces, and rock sculptures that look like animals all underwater. It's theorized that a terrible earthquake caused the city to be engulfed by water. But to this day, we don't know the true origins of this mysterious underwater city. Conspiracy theorists believe that the CIA destroyed this island in order to expand America's economic zone. Unless we travel back in time, there's no way to find out more about the city and what happened to it. Coming in at number eight, we have Carol A. Deering, aka the ghost ship of the Outer Banks. So on January 31st, 1921, the Carol A. Deering was found abandoned off of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. The crew was nowhere to be found. On top of that, tons of stuff was missing from the ship including the crew's personal belongings, life rafts, log books, and navigational equipment. To this day, no one knows what happened to the crew aboard the ship. But of course, we got some theories. Theory one is that a mutiny occurred. Theory two is that they were ransacked by pirates. Theory three is that they were taking part in rum running. People stole the ship to use for the rum running. And when they were done, they just abandoned the ship and left it there. But like I said before, we don't know for sure. In our seventh spot, we have the electronic fog. Okay, this one is pretty weird, not gonna lie. So on December 4th, 1970, a man named Rob McGregor was flying over the Bermuda Triangle when he was met by this weird tunnel-shaped vortex. He entered it and apparently his wings sounded like they were scraping along metal. All of the electronic and magnetic navigational instruments malfunctioned. When he looked up, all he saw was a dull gray fog. Also, there were strange clouds forming behind the airplane. They were only in the clouds for a couple of minutes, but claimed that they traveled for 40 minutes. When they got out of the fog, they were over Miami Beach, a flight that would have taken 75 minutes. He believes that this weird fog is what has caused other planes and boats and passengers to disappear in the Bermuda Triangle. So what is this weird electronic fog that he encountered while over the ocean? That's something I want to know. In our number six spot today, we have the Milky Sea Phenomenon. This phenomenon is certainly much more beautiful than the name would suggest, and while we kind of know what causes it, there are still many, many unanswered questions that surround it. The first recorded sighting of this phenomenon occurred in 1846 when Raphael Semmes, who was the captain of the CSS Alabama, spotted it and was horrified by what he was seeing. He wrote, From the deep blue water into a patch of water so light it startled me. The the whole face of nature seemed changed, and with a little stretch of the imagination, the Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lighted up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. This phenomenon is so bright that it can be seen from the satellites orbiting Earth, and while it looks amazing in pictures, I can only imagine how frightening it would be to see in person when little is known about why it happens. It is believed that the glow is caused by bioluminescent bacteria that grows in all oceans in our world, but in order to produce a glow like we've seen, this bacteria has to be multiplied by billions of trillions, and we don't know how or why this happens. Also, we don't know for sure if that is what is responsible for the glow, it's just our current best guess. Just for the sake of our expansive imaginations, let's say that it really is this bacteria causing the glow. Why does it come to the ocean surface? Why in such great numbers? Every time this happens, it's at unpredictable times, locations, and sizes, so basically, 
it remains a strange but stunning ocean mystery. In our number 5 spot today we have the SS Beichimo. The SS Beichimo was built in Sweden in 1914 and it belonged to the Hudson's Bay Company. This ship was used to trade provisions for pelts in Inuit settlements along the northwest territories of Canada. On October 1st 1931 the ship was ending its trading run and was packed with fur when it became trapped in pack ice. The crew decided to briefly abandon the ship and they traveled over the ice to the nearest town for shelter. Because of the location and the time, it wasn't exactly going to be simple for everyone to be rescued. On October 15th, the Hudson's Bay Company sent an aircraft to save 22 of the members, but 15 remained and began to prepare in case they needed to stay the winter. Because the ship couldn't be heated, the remaining crew members would return to the ship every few days to chip away some of the ice, but also to grab essential items from the ship. On November 24th, there was a powerful storm and once it had cleared, the Beichimo was gone. The remaining crew assumed that it had sunk, but this is really where our mystery gets started. An Inuk hunter spotted the ship around 72 miles from the camp the remaining crew members had set up, and somehow they ended up locating it, removing the rest of the valuables, and then abandoning it for the last time because it was believed that this ship wouldn't last the rest of the winter. After the rest of the crew was finally rescued, the ship ended up being spotted around 480 miles from its previous sighting. For 40 years after, the Beichima was frequently spotted floating in different locations, sometimes even providing people with shelter during storms, but was never once captured. In 2006, the Alaskan government began to work on a project to find the Beichimo, but since the most previous sighting, she has never been located again. While the ship is now presumed sunken, it would have been the longest sailing ghost ship of all time. Ships rarely survive for nearly as long while being unmanned, especially in the crushing icy waters. We still haven't found the wreck of this ship either, so perhaps it is still out there floating somewhere. In our number 4 spot today we have the Devil's Sea. The Devil's Sea is like the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific as it lies in the region just south of Tokyo. This area is often thought as some sort of a paranormal area because of the consistent horrible happenings that occur in it. This area is one of the 12 vile vortices in the world with the Bermuda Triangle being the most famous one. Above the Devil's Sea, planes are known to seemingly just drop out of the sky like something is reaching up and grabbing them. Methane deposits cause large explosions in the area, and during World War II, this area was the site of over 20 missing submarines. There have also been numerous ships, some twice the size of the Titanic, who have gone missing without a trace after sailing through the Devil Sea. This is all to say that while we don't really know what lurks in this area, it's probably safest to just stay the heck away from it. In our number 3 spot today we have the Cassie Nicole. The Cassie Nicole was a boat that set sail from Richmond Hill, Georgia on April 10th, 1990 with four people on board. During the second day aboard, one of the passengers realized that the boat was suddenly taking on water, and at this same time, the pumps and radio were not working, which left them with little to no options. The crew decided it was time to board a life raft and abandon ship. After a day of floating on this life raft, one of the passengers named Nathan saw the ship's hatch cover floating by them and thought that it might be able to support him better. Once he hopped onto the cover, he ended up losing sight of the other three crew members. Later in the day, he saw a freighter go by multiple times and he was hoping that it had picked up the three crew members he had lost contact with. After three days of floating at sea, Nathan was finally rescued but he received the news that the other crew members hadn't been found. Months went by with no sign of the others until a few months later when Nathan's sister, as well as the owner of the boat, began receiving strange phone calls from someone who was speaking in Spanish. The person on the other line said their name as well as the names of the missing people and in the final phone call the stranger said in English, I'm bringing them home, but there has still never been a sign of them. The family of the disappeared men believe that they may be alive somewhere but are being held in a foreign country, but why? And why would someone say that they were bringing them home only to not do that? In our number 2 spot today we have the loneliest whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's a male or a female, or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. The whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 50 2 hertz with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it's just left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly is going on.
going on here. And while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles, and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf, and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course, without the whale, how could we possibly know for sure? In our number one spot today, we have the French sailors. Yves Emmanuel Payne and Laurent Hernas were French sailors who were hired to sail a boat to its new owners. Their trip would see them departing from Annapolis, Maryland, and heading to Guadalupe, but when they never arrived at their destination, searches quickly began. Unlike many of the other stories similar to this one, there were actually sightings of this ship, most of them occurring along the intercoastal waterway, which was far off from the course the ship was intended to take. Along with these sightings came the frightening news that the witnesses claimed to see a third man on the boat which made people begin to believe that it had been hijacked, which wouldn't have been all that surprising considering the state of the art vessel they were on. Despite these sightings, the boat was never found and neither were the men. To add even more strange occurrences to this story however, around two months after the disappearance, a police officer in South Carolina pulled over a speeding car. After a sort of strange encounter with those in the vehicle, it was later discovered that two of the three men in the car were the missing Yves Emmanuel and Laurent, but at this point, they have course had already been released. What exactly happened here has never been fully discovered, despite this all happening in 1991. In our number 10 spot today we have the upsweep. We all know how little we know about the ocean, and that includes what kinds of creatures lie in it. So while this mysterious sound out of context probably wouldn't be that freaky, when put into this situation it becomes quite a bit more eerie. This sound is referred to as upsweep, and it was caught when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory started its sound surveillance system in August of 1991. The sound is apparently more seasonal, with its peaks in spring and fall, but it is unclear if the changing of seasons is responsible for this sound, or if it's coming from something that lurks in the ocean and remains undiscovered. Just for reference, here is a clip of that sound played at 20 times the original speed. It is possible that this sound could be coming from underwater volcanic activity, but considering the fact that this has yet to be proven, I am here to ask the question, what if it's not? In our number 9 spot today we have Bermija. Bermija was an island that could be found on many maps, spanning from the 16th to the 20th century, but in a 1997 survey, the island could not be located. In an extensive 2009 study, it was concluded that the island that was once labeled as Bermija just didn't exist, which left a whole host of questions. The island was supposed to be located just off of the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is particularly important because if it did exist, its location would be integral to determining the boundaries for exploitation rights of oil in the Gulf of Mexico. So of course when this island that's been included on many maps seemingly just doesn't exist anymore, people really began to speculate what could have happened. There are a few major theories with this one. The first is that the original observation of the island was incorrect and then no one ever went to double check that this island existed. The next being that possible shifts in the geography of the ocean floor, along with rising sea levels, were the cause for this island to completely disappear. The third theory is the most mysterious out of them all, and this is the theory that the island was blown up by the CIA so as to expand the economic zone belonging to the United States. It certainly is not an easy thing for an island to just disappear, so it truly is quite a large mystery about what exactly happened here. And and at this point, it is unclear if we'll ever know for sure. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Sarah Joe. The Sarah Joe was a fishing boat that departed from Maui in February of 1979. There were five crew members aboard the boat, and when they left around 10 a.m. that day, the skies were perfectly clear, but while they were out at sea, the wind began to change and they ended up encountering a horrible storm. People on shore who were rightfully worried about the crew headed to the shoreline to try and wave the boat back in, but they were unable to locate the boat at all. One of the passengers fathers even went out on a separate boat in the middle of the storm to try and see if anything could be done or if he could at least locate the ship, but to no avail. It was presumed that all of the crew members had been lost due to the severity of the storm. The following days of course consisted of many hours of searching, but neither the ship or any of the men were located. Flash forward almost an entire decade to September of 1988, and a member of the initial search team
team, John Naughton, was on a wildlife expedition on a deserted atoll around 2,000 miles from Maui when he discovered a small boat and a makeshift grave. He left the site as untouched as he could and immediately contacted authorities, who were then able to confirm that the boat was the Sarah Joe and the person buried in the makeshift grave was one of the passengers who went missing all those years ago. While experts do agree that the boat could have drifted here and it would have only taken about three months to do so, this area was surveyed in 1985 and there was no trace of either the boat or the makeshift grave. So where would the boat and this crew member have been from the 1979 disappearance until after the 1985 survey? These are the types of questions that still remain unanswered to this day. There are of course theories but none that cover all the mysteries this story holds. In our number 7 spot today we have the Yonaguni Monument. Just off of the coast of Yonaguni in Japan there is a diving location that has a high population of hammerhead sharks making it a large and popular attraction. In 1986 a diver in the area noticed some formation on the seabed that resembled a structure of some sort. This led to a team of scientists going on a dive to gather more information and this is when the Yonaguni Monument was officially discovered. The monument is made of sandstone and mudstones but here's the mysterious thing. Scientists can't agree on on its origins. There are some who believe that this is a natural formation, but there are some who swear that it is man made. The stairs are over 165 feet long and 65 feet wide, which obviously means that they are strikingly huge. There are pretty reasonable arguments for both sides, and considering the fact that this thing is at least 10,000 years old, I guess it's fair that we may not have all the answers, but it certainly is strange that we can't quite figure it out. At the end of the day, I really don't want to meet whatever thing would need stairs this large. In our number 5 spot we have the frilled shark. The frilled shark can live to depths of up to 5,000 feet which means they were most likely not spotted by a casual diver. This eel like shark has 6 pairs of gills that are across its throat. It usually swallows its prey whole but its 300 teeth would also guarantee that its prey would most likely not escape anyway. This fish is referred to as a living fossil as it looks so similar to to its ancient ancestors. Honestly, this fish looks old and worn, and a little bit like a snake. Honestly, it looks like it could be the demon of the sea. In some pics of this shark, it looks truly terrifying, and everyone, including divers, would be scared if they were ever to stumble across this fish. In our number four spot, we have the giant squid. The giant squid is indeed giant. It is 40 feet long, that's about 12 meters. Yeah, this definitely scared the breath out of some divers somewhere upon its discovery. It is one of the largest animals without backbones in the world. They live at depths of 1,000 to 2,000 feet, which definitely has made them hard to study. Apparently, they also have the largest eye in the animal kingdom as their eyes are about 10 inches in diameter. They are carnivores, so they usually eat deep sea fish, young sharks, smaller squids, and humans. Just joking, but honestly, I'm sure if they had the opportunity to eat you, I bet you they would. In our number three spot, we have the gulper eel. Okay guys, let's be real, a diver wouldn't be able to see most deep sea fish because, well, we can't necessarily dive into the deep sea yet, <laughs> lol. However, I'm sure divers have seen them via pictures and after being captured in deep sea fishing nets, so there's that. The gulper eel is one of them that was most likely seen because of a deep sea fishing net. This fish has one large mouth and its mouth is bigger than its whole body, which makes it a tad scary to look at. It usually feeds on small creations, so there's really nothing to fear. It wouldn't eat you. It has a long pink fluorescent tail that helps attract prey with its light. I personally think it is quite chilling to look at and would love to know if you agree in the comments section below. In our number two spot, we have the hatchet fish. So many scary fish. I'm gonna have to put on something funny after this, like the Big Bang Theory, my newest obsession. I know, I'm late to the game, whatever. Yeah, girl is a late bloomer. The deep sea hatchet fish basically looks like an alien with its big bulging eye. Oh, and you know, it glows in the dark. Yeah, glows. Pretty cool. Which honestly makes it maybe one of the coolest fish. Cool, but terrifying? It has a row of luminescent organs lining its belly. It apparently mimics daylight above, which throws off predators below it. They live at depths up to 3,200 feet. They have a pretty large mouth that is tilted upward and opens wide to scoop up meals. In our sixth spot today, we have the time travel. Legend goes that one day three ships were traveling through the Bermuda Triangle. 
Everything was going fine until they encountered a mysterious fog. When they emerged through the other end of the fog, there were only two ships. The other ship was way ahead of them. The crew aboard the ship claimed that the fog transported them back in time several years. There, they saw a bunch of different boats and passengers also sailing. Then they approached the same fog and they got transported back to the current day. Isn't that weird? Was this the same fog the pilot encountered? Like, what is going on in the ocean? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the disappearance of Keith Davis. Now, this case is certainly going to keep you up at night, so just a little warning. So in 2015, Keith Davis, a fisheries observer, headed out to sea with his crew. His job was to monitor all the catches and collect data on it. But about a month later, Keith disappeared off the ship in the middle of the day, in broad daylight. He has never been found. On top of that, the weather that day was calm, and he was an experienced observer. So it's not like he just fell overboard by accident. So what happened to him? Well, theory goes that he knew too much, so someone got rid of him. When police searched his email, they found photographic evidence of illegal things happening on board these ships, like they were allegedly smuggling people. He was also keeping track of a number of rule violations. Not only that, a year before his disappearance, Keith sent a mysterious email to his friends. In the email was a video of four men being shot to death while holding onto debris in the ocean. So theory goes that Keith was killed for knowing way too much. But still, to this day, we don't know exactly what happened to him. Coming in at number four, we have the Ellen Austin. In 1880, a ship named the Ellen Austin set sail to New York from Liverpool. During their travels, the crew spotted a ship floating near the Bermuda Triangle. They approached it and found that nothing was wrong with the ship, but all the crew on board were missing. So they decided to put some of their own crew members on board this mysterious ship and have it come with them. But during the trip, the two ships got separated. They were separated for a couple of days before the Ellen Austin spotted the ship once again. However, all their crew on board vanished. There was no trace of them. Now, the story goes on saying that they placed another set of crew members aboard the ship, and once again, the exact same thing happened to those men. They disappeared off the ship without a trace. But that account hasn't been confirmed. Either way, this mystery gave birth to an urban legend. Basically, a cursed ghost ship lurks the waters near the Bermuda Triangle. Those who hop on board will mysteriously disappear without a trace. In our third spot, we have the disappearing aircrafts. In 1945, five torpedo bomber planes took off for a three-hour exercise. But while flying over the Atlantic Ocean, they disappeared without a trace. It all started when the flight's leader noticed that his compass wasn't working properly. So he was worried that they were flying in the wrong direction. He instructed the planes to then change paths, thinking that they were going to then be heading towards Florida. But in reality, they were just traveling deeper into the Atlantic. As the planes started getting close to the Bermuda Triangle, their signals began to fail. The last few things the pilots ever said were, and I quote, everything looks strange, even the ocean. And it looks like we are entering white water were completely lost. Then the communication was cut completely and they were never heard from again. In our second spot, we have the severed feet. What would you do if you were out on a nice stroll on the beach when you came across someone's missing arm or foot? Believe it or not, this has happened a number of times. Since 2007, severed human feet have been washing up on the shore of the Pacific Northwest. The first was a right foot still inside of a size 12 Adidas shoe. The second was again a right foot, size 12, but it was in a Reebok shoe. Since then, 15 more feet have washed up on shore. To this day, we don't know who they belong to or what happened to them, or even if they were victims of the same killer. It's really freaking creepy if you ask me. And in our number one spot today, we have the witchcraft. This is the name of a boat that set sail on December 22nd, 1967. On board was the captain, Dan Burak, and his friend, Patrick Horgan. The two headed off to get a good look at Miami's Christmas lights. However, after traveling just one mile out, they contacted the Coast Guard, saying that the boat had hit something but there was no damage. Dan seemed to be calm on the call to the Coast Guard and said they just needed a tow to the shore. So they figured that the boat's propeller was just damaged or something like that. The Coast Guard immediately went out, but when he arrived at the spot the boat was said to be, no one was there. It took him only 19 minutes to get there, yet the boat was already gone. Here's where it gets super weird. This boat was virtually unsinkable. 
Not only did they have life jackets and lifeboats on board, but the boat had a special flotation device installed in it. This made it basically unsinkable. So even if the boat started filling with water, part of it would still be sticking out of the water. So the Coast Guard would be able to see it. And also they had flare guns on board with them. So if something serious started to happen, they could have set those off. They didn't. Starting off this countdown, we had the HMS Sea Serpent. In August of 1848, the crew on the HMS Daedalus was sailing in the South Atlantic when they spotted this terrifying creature. According to the ship's captain and several members of the crew, they claimed that the monster was 60 feet in length, with four feet of its head raising out of the water. This massive sea beast lurked around the ship for 20 minutes before taking off. To this day, we don't know what it is that they saw. They described it as being a long snake with a dragon's head. Pretty weird and creepy, right? Well, they aren't the only ones who witnessed this too. It was spotted a second time by the American Brig Daphne. And in fact, crew on board even shot at it. Scientists claim that maybe they just saw a whale. But come on, a bunch of experienced sailors would know the difference between a whale and something that's not a whale. And at number nine today, we have the Mary Celeste. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. To this day, the mysterious case of the Mary Celeste is considered one of the creepiest cases in nautical history. Basically, in 1872, the Mary Celeste was found abandoned in the middle of choppy waters. The crew was nowhere to be found. All the cargo on board remained untouched. Now, the lifeboats were missing, which makes people believe that the crew tried to get off the ship and flee. But why would they just abandon their ship like that? Well, we got a number of theories. One, a sea monster got them. Two, a pirate takeover occurred. Three, they were abducted by aliens. Or four, they consumed bad food and they all went mad. I know, it seems wild. To make matters weirder though, the crew and lifeboats were never found. No one knows what happened aboard that ship. In our eighth spot, we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, a group of divers went out looking for treasure in the Baltic Sea, and they came across something weird. It was a 70 meter long weird object laying 300 feet below sea level. This thing has since been named the Baltic Sea Anomaly, and no one knows what the heck it is. It's just this massive steel looking structure shaped like a disc with some weird patterns on it. Gets weirder when the divers claim their equipment randomly stopped working when they got closer to the object. There was a massive electrical interference there. So what is this thing? Honestly, we don't know. But some people think it's a glacial deposit left from thawing glaciers. Or it's part of a UFO spacecraft from one extreme to another. Could be either or, who knows. In our seventh spot, we have the three men. In 2007, three Australian men headed out on an expedition together. Three days later, their ship was found drifting by itself in the middle of the ocean. The men were nowhere to be found. That's not all. On the ship, they found knives all over the cabin floor, as if there had been a fight and people were scrambling for weapons. What happened to these men still remains a mystery to this day. But of course, we got the theories. One is that they got into a devastating fight and they all ended up dying. Or two, their propeller became snarled in a fishing line. One dude went to go free the line, but then fell into the ocean. The second dude tried to save him and then fell in as well. And then so on with the third guy or who even knows. Okay, we don't know for sure, that's just a theory. The only thing we do know is that this case is pretty creepy. Moving on to number six, we have the Kraken. So it may just be that the Kraken is real but it's not what we think it is. In fact, the legend of the Kraken was thought to have been born after a number of sailors spotted giant squids while sailing. So the Kraken might actually just be giant squids. In 1870, a giant squid washed up in New Zealand. Legend goes that it was as tall as the top of a ship's main mast, and it could easily take over a ship by wrapping its tentacles around the hull and crushing it. Is this true? Who knows? But no one believed that giant squids were real until around 2005. That's when scientists caught a photo of one. Then in 2013, they got a video of one. Now they believe there are millions of giant squids out there. The mystery here is, what beast did the sailors encounter in 1870? 
Was it a ginormous squid or was it a kraken? Or is a squid a kraken? Who even knows, okay? There's just so many questions out there that we need answers to. Starting off this countdown, we have the mysterious sunken ship. So the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration uses a remote operated vehicle called the Deep Discoverer in order to explore uncharted areas in the ocean and collect samples from them. Well, while diving in the Gulf of Mexico, they found an unknown shipwreck, which was then given the name number 15377. The deep discoverer was then able to take photos of the shipwreck and take samples from it. After doing so, they discovered that the shipwreck probably happened before the 1830s. It was a merchant ship built for distance, but that's all we know. The rest is history and a mystery. In our ninth spot today, we have the Atlit Yam Ruins. This is a completely submerged ancient city that can be found 10 meters below sea level. It was first discovered in 1984 by a marine archaeologist, Yuha Galili. Since then, a number of expeditions have took place in order to unearth the city and find out more about it. What's fascinating about this place is that right in the middle, it has this massive 10 acre stone circle thing. We still don't know much about this structure. One theory though is that it was used for some kind of ritual, but we still don't know. Not only that, scientists don't know how the city sunk. Theory goes that the city was struck by a tsunami which caused a volcanic eruption, causing the city to flood and sink. But like I said, we still don't know for sure. This is one seriously mysterious place. Coming in at number eight, we have the underwater river. Okay, this one blows my mind. Not only does it look super cool, but like the whole concept is super cool. So it doesn't seem possible, but there are rivers underwater. Like straight up, a flowing river beneath all the ocean water. There's even trees growing alongside the shores. How on earth is this possible? Like how can there be two different batches of water underwater? It just blows my mind and it's been a huge mystery to scientists for years. Moving on to number seven, we have the mysterious purple orb. Located deep under the sea near the Channel Islands, marine scientists discovered a glowing purple orb. This is something that they have never seen before. They were left completely baffled. Theories range from some kind of egg to fungi to a type of sea slug to even a type of jellyfish or a tiny octopus. They just have no clue. And whatever it is, it hasn't been identified yet. But it is beautiful. That's for sure. Whatever it is. Moving on at number six, we have the world's oldest city. Back in 2001, the remains of an ancient city were found at the bottom of the ocean off the coast of India. In fact, it was found by complete accident. The divers ended up finding pieces of sculptures, human remains, artwork, and wooden furniture. A piece of wood from the furniture dates back to at least 9,000 plus years ago. Now, this was a huge breakthrough because it completely rewrites the history in that area. Now, the city is huge. It's basically the size of Manhattan. They have massive walls and plazas. And like I said, the structure dates back to 9,000 years ago, which is 5,000 years older than any city discovered by archaeologists anywhere. And they barely know anything about it. That's why it's hella mysterious. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Lost Road or Highway. The Bimini Road is a rock formation in the Bahamas composed of rectangular shaped limestone blocks. It was first discovered back in 1968 by a diver. In fact, when he reported his findings, he said it just looked like pavement. So then some archaeologists took a dive to see what it was all about. They deemed it man-made as the stones were purposefully lined in a linear formation. The road goes on straight for about half a mile before ending in a slight curve. So now, what's the big deal? Well, obviously, there's something more to this road. Some believe that it actually leads to the lost city of Atlantis. One thing that supported this theory is that back in the late 1930s, Prophet Edgar Case said that the discovery of a road will lead to Atlantis. He said that it will be discovered in 1968 or 1969. So when this road was discovered in 1968, people were flipping out, being like, this is it, it leads to Atlantis. But we still haven't found Atlantis, so. 
nice. In our fourth spot today, we have the volcanic underwater activity. Volcanic activity underwater seems impossible, but alas, it is not. Let's take a look at Loki's castle in the Arctic Ocean. The volcanic activity found here was discovered in 2008 by researchers from the University of Bergen in Norway. They found a field of five active hydrothermal vents between Norway and Greenland. It's quite fascinating, and research is still going on to better understand all this. Like I said, the world is just one big mystery, and count how many times I said mystery or mysterious in this video and let me know in the comments below. I feel like it's a lot. Moving on at number three, we have the 60,000 ton stone structure. Located in the Sea of Galilee lies a weird cone shaped stone structure that weighs 60 thousand tons. It was first discovered in 2003 by a team of researchers doing a sonar survey of the sea. When they found it, they sent divers down there to check it out. That's when they found a very odd and massive structure. It's said to be nearly 10 meters high and 70 meters wide. Now there's a lot of theories about this structure. One is that it was made to mark a grave. Two, it was made on land, but then it got submerged after sea levels rose. Or three, it was created as a fish nursery. But over the years, archaeologists and scientists have gone into fights over the structure's origins. The only thing they know for sure is that it was man-made and dates back to 12,000 years ago. In our second spot, we have the locomotive graveyard. In 1985, during ocean mapping, scientists came across something quite eerie. They discovered two steam locomotives from the 1850s. They are sunk under 90 feet of water, and honestly, they look hella creepy. Now, there were no train tracks or stations around, so scientists were baffled. How did the trains get there, and why? Well, one theory is that they were being transported from Boston to the Mid-Atlantic when they got hit by a storm. And either they fell off by accident, or they were deliberately pushed off to save the ship, you know, lessen the load. Again, this is just a theory. No one actually knows how they sunk. Plus, there's not even a record of these at all. And in our number one spot today, we have the Lost Kingdom of Cleopatra, aka Thonis Heraklion. Located just northwest of Alexandria is the sunken city of Heraklion, and it's referred to as Egypt's Atlantis. It lay lost under the sea until the early 2000s. A group of divers were working off of the Egyptian coast when they found a large fragment of rock under the seabed, or so they thought it was just rock. When they brought it out of the water, they found it to be a sculpture of the Egyptian god of fertility, Happy. After this discovery, they madly went to work exploring the area. They ended up discovering pieces of pottery, ancient coins, jewelry, busts, and ruins of temples. How the city ended up underwater is still a mystery. One theory is that it has to do with the rising sea levels and crumbling foundations of the city, causing it to slide into the Mediterranean Sea. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have the ghost shark. The ghost shark lives in the deep ocean and lives for about 30 years. Years. It looks like a ghost, but arguably even scarier than one. It eats primarily crabs, shellfish, sea urchins, and octopus. Apparently, these fish have been around even longer than dinosaurs. Their big eyes can appear dead in the water, but glow when they are exposed to light, giving them that ghostly look. In our number nine spot, we have the Atlantic wolffish. The Atlantic wolffish kind of looks a bit like a blob with very sharp canine like teeth. So sharp that it can crush the shells of sea urchins and crabs very easily, and that is what they eat. They can live at depths of 2,000 feet, and apparently they can produce an antifreeze that keeps their blood pumping in freezing water. This fish's overbite and general scary look definitely terrified us humans when we discovered it. In our number eight spot, we have the red-lipped batfish. This fish is found near Peru at the depths of 10 to 249 feet. They eat small fish and small invertebrates, including including shrimp, crabs, worms, and mullets. They aren't good swimmers, but they use their pectoral, pelvic, and anal fins to walk on the ocean floor. Like this. <laughs> anal fins. <laughs> what, I'm five. <laughs> I wonder if whoever discovered this fish was more confused than scared to have found a fish that literally looks like it's wearing red lipstick. In our number seven spot, we have the dragonfish. The deep sea dragonfish lives about 2,000 feet below the surface and is most certainly a ferocious predator. I mean, look at their teeth. They are clearly born to be fierce. They are quite long, coming up on six and a half inches. And yes, they do have wing-like fins, which is definitely why they were called dragonfish. They are also called 
called the sea moth, which, yeah, no. <laughs> that makes them seem less cool, because, you know, moths are a pain. So we're gonna stick with the dragonfish. Little is known about their history thus far, which is just another reminder that the ocean is huge and we have so much more to learn. In our number six spot, we have the Dumbo octopus. I can't think of the Dumbo octopus without thinking, aw, so cute, it's like Dumbo. It has protruding ears that are like fins, and that is why it was given the name. Its fins act like propellers and propel them upwards, like so. Personally, I don't think this creature is very scary, maybe because the cute name put it in a positive light, but if you are someone that feels uncomfortable looking at a cluster of dots, don't look at its legs. I am that person, and just looking at its suction cup identical legs made me a tiny bit queasy. Apparently there are about 15 different Dumbo octopus species, which is pretty cool, and also they live in the depths of at least 13,000 feet. They are the deepest living octopus known to man as of yet. They measure to about 8 to 12 inches and they can measure to about 6 feet high. They are quite hard to spot as they are known for their ability to camouflage. Pretty cool. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Cursed Shipwreck. Back in the early 2000s, a natural gas company was laying pipeline in the ocean when they came across a shipwreck. Nowadays, this shipwreck is considered cursed or haunted. Let me explain why. So after the shipwreck was discovered, a team was sent down there to check it out. But everything that could go wrong did. First, the exploration sub malfunctioned right as it was getting ready to explore the wreck. Then the Navy sent a research sub down there and it literally self-destructed upon entering the water. Then over the course of a couple of years, other attempts have been made to explore the ship, but those have gone wrong as well. None have been successful. So now it's believed that this ship is cursed and doesn't want anyone entering it. In our fourth spot, we have the disappearing submarines. In 1968, four different submarines all mysteriously went missing. As a result, people believe that this can no way just be a coincidence. Something was out there sinking these subs. The subs were the USS Scorpion, the Soviet submarine K-129, a French submarine Minerve, and the INS Dakar. In fact, the French sub and the INS Dakar disappeared only four days apart. The French submarine has still never been found. What's weird is that it disappeared only an hour away from its port. So you think they'd be able to track it down, but nope. So what are the odds that four massive submarines go missing the exact same year? What could have caused this? We'll probably never know. In our third spot, we have Sylvester Butler Jr. Apparently a number of people mysteriously vanish off of cruise ships each year. Most of them have never been found. Today, let's look at the weird case of Sylvester Butler Jr. In May of 2017, Sylvester boarded a cruise ship headed to the Pacific Islands. While on board though, the crew noticed he was acting weird. He kept to himself, barely talked to anyone else, and housekeeping claimed that he never unpacked his bags. The only charge on his bill was the occasional soft drink he would order to his room. Also, every time the cruise made a stop, he never left the ship. Then somewhere between Fiji and the final port Sydney, crew noticed that he was missing. No one knows what happened to him. And the ship's CCTV footage revealed nothing. It's sad, but theory goes that Butler jumped off the ship and took his own life. Apparently he suffered from a chronic genetic kidney disease. So maybe he wanted to end his suffering. But we don't know for sure. On top of that, I believe that his body was never found. Coming in our second spot today, we have the Strongsay Beast. The Strongsay Beast is the name given to a massive carcass that washed ashore on Strongsay Island on September of 1808. At first, people thought it was just the body of a shark, but this creature had paws instead of fins. So then people were hella confused. Not only that, but it was 55 feet long. But part of its tail was missing, so clearly this thing was even bigger than that. This beast was described as follows, and I quote, its flesh was described as being like coarse, ill-colored beef, entirely covered with fat and tallow, and without the least resemblance or affinity to fish. The skin, which was gray colored and had an elastic texture, was said to be about two inches thick in parts." End quote. Not only that, but its bristles glowed in the dark when wet, and the contents in its stomach were red. So what is this beast? The Natural History Society of Edinburgh believes that it is a sea serpent of some sorts. Maybe the Loch Ness Monster or its long-lost brother? Who knows? And 
In our number one spot today, we have the Oorang Madon. So this next mystery is pretty freaking creepy, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna keep you up at night. So in 1947, two American ships received a distress call from the ship the Oorang Madon. The SOS call was from a crew member that stated everyone on board the ship had died. Then all of a sudden, his SOS ended with his last message being, I die. When the ships arrived, they found the ship completely unharmed. The entire crew, including a dog on board, had died. Everyone had a terrified look plastered on their face. No one knows what happened to the ship. In our number one spot, we have the goblin shark. When this shark was discovered, surely everyone was terrified. It literally looks like a goblin trapped in a shark body. <laughs> this creature is one of the most scary looking deep sea creatures that I have ever seen. Apparently they can be as long as four meters, but some hypothesize that they can be longer. They have very long snouts and protruding mouths that hold many, many teeth that contribute to their scariness. They can crush their prey, such as shellfish, easily with their teeth. They can eat a fish whole, and that is usually what their diet consists of, rat tails and dragon fishes. They can weigh up to 460 pounds. Their lifespan is quite long at 30 to 35 years. Even though it looks quite terrifying, it does have a flabby body with small fins, so it can have quite sluggish. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Nina. The Nina was a ship that was once the flagship of the New York Yacht Club, but that unfortunately changed in 2013 when it disappeared on the Tasman Seas with its owner and six other people on board. The ship had left New Zealand and was bound for Australia on May 29th, and it was estimated to be somewhere from an 8 to 10 day trip. The last time the ship was heard from was on June 4th, and it wasn't until June 12th that the search for the ship began after friends and family of those on board began to get worried as the ship was now a few days overdue. The rescuers searched until it was called off on July 6th after they had searched 737,000 square nautical miles and had found nothing. The search was extremely thorough and they still were unable to find anything. No yacht, no debris, no life raft, and none of the people on board. The last communications with the Nina came on June 3rd and 4th as a crew member was contacting a meteorologist and router for Pacific Cruisers in order to get some advice on where the ship should go so as to escape a nasty storm they were encountering. There was also an undelivered text message from June 4th that the satellite phone company was able to retrieve that stated that the storm sails had been shredded the night before and that they would update them later at 6pm with the course info. This definitely wasn't an ideal situation, but the message didn't signal that they would have been in immediate distress either. Aside from these messages, there wasn't any other contact that seemed to have been attempted, despite the ship being well equipped with emergency radios, flares, a satellite phone, and all of that sort of thing. Right now the best guess as to what happened is that the ship may have sunk really quickly following the storms and it didn't allow any time for the passengers to activate any of the emergency equipment, but at the end of the day this is all just a guess and what exactly happened out there still remains a mystery. In our number 9 spot today we have the mysterious whale die off. Between 2015 and 2016 there was a mysterious large die-off of whales located in the Gulf of Alaska. The deaths first began to be discovered in late May of 2015 when the carcasses of endangered fin whales were found floating near Kodiak. The total of whales found in the area climbed to 30 with additional reports of five other whales found in the waters just off of British Columbia. Because of the difficulties in retrieving the past whales, it was almost impossible to find out what exactly was causing this. The leading suspect was a toxin being produced by algae, but when one of the carcasses that researchers were able to recover was tested, it came up negative for the toxin that they were searching for. It is possible that the decomposition that had already taken place was the cause for this negative test, but it's also equally as possible that this just wasn't the cause in the first place. The good news is that since 2016, this strange and upsetting anomaly has stopped, so the whales are safe. But unfortunately, we aren't any closer to getting answers on what exactly happened here. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Kaz 2. The Kaz 2 was a 12 meter long catamaran that set sail on April 15th of 2007 and was found adrift just three days later on April 18th, but without her crew. 
When the ship set sail, she was carrying three crew members, all of which were relatively inexperienced sailors. On April 18th, someone in a helicopter reported seeing the adrift ship, but it wasn't until April 20th that maritime authorities were able to catch up with the boat and boarded it. It was then, however, that they uncovered the bizarre circumstances on the ship. Everything on the ship was perfectly normal, aside from the fact that the crew had just seemingly vanished. There was a meal set on the table waiting to be eaten, a laptop was open and on, the engine was still running, all of the life vests were still on board, and all of the ship's emergency systems were fully functioning. The only out of place things were, of course, the missing crew, the fact that one of the ship's sails was badly shredded, and there was no life raft on board, but it is still unclear whether there was ever one on board. There are many, many theories as to what may have happened to the crew, but none have ever been substantiated or confirmed, which leaves the fate of the three crew members a complete mystery that we may never get the answers to. In our number seven spot today, we have the disappearance of Baz Jan Adder. Baz Jan Adder was a Dutch conceptual and performance artist, as well as a skilled sailor. He set sail on July 9th, 1975 in a ship called the Ocean Wave, as he was setting sail to make his single-handed west to east coast crossing of the North Atlantic. He estimated that this trip was going to take around two and a half months, but it wasn't until nine months after he set sail that his boat was found unmanned, floating almost vertically in the water. The people who found the ship were Spanish fishermen who then took the boat back to Spain, where it ended up being stolen. Throughout all of this, Baz was nowhere to be found, and even still, over 40 years later, the mystery of what exactly happened remains. There are people who speculate he fell overboard in heavy, bad weather, but this is of course impossible to tell, especially with neither the boat or Baz to provide evidence. The information to go on has only been what was provided by the people who saw the boat before before it was stolen, so of course that is not nearly enough to really have any questions answered. What happened to Baz on his sailing trip is still a mystery, but I do hope one day we find out at least some answers. In our number 6 spot today we have the Gulf of Mexico wreck. For almost two centuries, this shipwreck went undiscovered and undisturbed until the early 2000s when a pipeline bisected it, and since then it has been plaguing those who are trying to figure out what mysteries it holds. A team was assembled in order to try and search the wreckage, but every time they attempted, something went wrong that made it impossible for them. Every time they tried, the exploration sub would malfunction right before they were able to begin checking it out. Like I'm talking about everything, from video monitors going out whenever they fired the thrusters, to the sonar breaking, to hydraulics going haywire, one after another. After this whole ordeal, the Navy sent a research sub that pretty much just ended up self-destructing its own rover once it got into the water, and when it made its way to the wreck, its arms were too short to reach anything to collect. So this is all to say that it seems like whatever mysteries this shipwreck is holding, they are destined to remain as such. I'm starting to think that maybe this shipwreck is cursed. In our number 5 spot today we have the disappearance of George Smith. George Allen Smith and his wife Jennifer Hagel Smith had just married and were aboard the MS Brilliance of the Seas, which is a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, as they were doing a Mediterranean cruise for their honeymoon. On July 5th, 2005, the ship was somewhere just off of the coast of Turkey when it was discovered that George had disappeared. The night he was last seen, he was intoxicated from both alcohol as well as prescription drugs, and there was blood evidence found in his cabin as well on the side of the ship. There were two main theories in regards to his disappearance, the first being that his intoxication led to him falling overboard the ship, and the other was that perhaps a robbery had gone bad and foul play had been involved. This case was investigated for over a decade, with even the FBI and their mafia division getting involved at one point. But despite this, neither George, his body, or what really happened to him has ever been found. There have been many assumptions made over the years, but 16 years later, it is still a mystery. In our number 4 spot today, we have the MV Tai Ching 21. On November 9, 2008, a Taiwanese fishing vessel was found floating, but it was empty and had been totally gutted by fire. The 50-ton ship had obviously suffered a fire, but since there was no smoke anymore, it was clear it had been a few days since the fire was put out. Upon inspecting the ship, it was realized that the ship's lifeboat, along with its three life rafts, were missing. 
not to mention the crew of 29 missing men. The last transmission from the radio of the ship was on October 28th, but after that, nothing had been heard from the members of the crew and there was no mayday call ever received. The search for the missing men spanned 21,000 square miles or 54,000 square kilometers, and searches were conducted by both the US Air Force as well as the New Zealand Air Force, but unfortunately, the search turned up no results. The last radio transmission from the ship was a personal call from the captain to his wife, which took place on that October 25th, but that was the last time anyone had heard. There still hasn't been any sign of the missing 29 crew members, which of course is absolutely devastating. It is clear they must have abandoned the ship after the fire started, but their fate from there remains completely unknown. In our number three spot today, we have the disappearance of Rebecca Corium. Rebecca Corium was a British crew member and youth worker on the Disney Wonder cruise ship in 2011. In the early morning hours of March 22nd, Rebecca was seen on CCTV footage in the crew lounge speaking to someone on the telephone phone, and it appears as though the conversation was a bit emotionally distressing for her. A few hours later, people began to worry because Rebecca hadn't shown up for the start of her shift, which was really unlike her, and when people went to go and see if maybe she had slept in or something like that, they were unable to locate her anywhere on the ship, which of course made people even more worried. That CCTV footage of Rebecca is the last known sighting of her, and since then, no one has been able to figure out where she went or what happened to her. The first assumption was of course that perhaps she had gone overboard, and it prompted extensive searches of the waters in the area, but unfortunately nothing turned up. Almost an entire year after her disappearance, someone emailed Rebecca's family to say that she was 85% sure she had seen Rebecca with a man on the streets of Venice, but unfortunately this potential lead didn't turn up any real evidence or clues. Many people state that perhaps Disney Cruise Lines know more about what really happened as other crew members have suggested that the entire ship is covered with so many cameras that there's no way that whatever happened could have been missed, but of course there's no no evidence that has been discovered which would prove these allegations. It has been 10 years since Rebecca's extremely mysterious disappearance and still no one knows exactly what happened on that terrible night. Hopefully one day some answers are found so Rebecca's family can get the closure that they deserve. In our number 2 spot today we have the disappearance of Jim Gray. Jim Gray was an incredibly important computer scientist who was responsible for many computer advancements that changed things for all of us. Other than being a computer scientist, he was also an experienced and skilled sailor and one day on January 28th, 2007, he set sail for a short trip so he could head out and spread his mother's ashes and she had recently passed away. As he began his trip, Jim spoke to his wife on the phone and said he would call her once he got back in range. After their phone call, he called his daughter as well and left a little message for her and then he was off on his trip, but unfortunately he never ended up returning. Jim's wife Donna was the one who raised the alarm bells as she was away on a trip, but like I mentioned, Jim said he would call her later and he never did. At this point is when the huge searches began. Thousands of images of the area where Jim or his boat might be were uploaded to Amazon Mechanical Turk for people to look through and see if they could find any kind of signs but to no avail. Jim also had an automatic emergency position indicating beacon on his ship, but whatever happened to Jim and the ship clearly didn't meet the requirements, or perhaps it had some sort of malfunction, or maybe it was even turned off. To this day, no one knows what happened to Jim or his boat, as no sign or trace of either has ever been found. The theories of what may have happened are endless and range from Jim intentionally disappearing, to him being kidnapped for his computer skills and brain in order to do some kind of inside job, and really everything in between. There most definitely are theories that are seemingly more likely than others, but at the end of the day, they are all a possibility. In 2012, Jim's widow asked the court to declare him dead in absentia, which ended up being granted, so as of 2012, Jim has been declared dead, but that does not mean that he is. In our number one spot today, we have the disappearance of Amy Lynn Bradley. On March 21st, 1998, Amy and her family boarded the Rhapsody of the Seas, which is a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, en route to Curaçao. On March 24th, after a fun night on the ship, Amy was hanging out and having a couple of drinks with the ship's band, and one of the members explained that she parted ways with them around 1am. After this, around 5.15am, Amy's father said he saw her sleeping on the cabin balcony. 
balcony. Unfortunately, however, once 6am rolled around, she wasn't there anymore and this was the beginning of the mystery. Once it was realized that Amy was missing, extensive searches were launched for full days before they ended up being called off when no signs or traces of Amy had ever been found. While this is all super mysterious and nobody really had anything to go on, the plot only thickens with this story. After her disappearance, people began to report seeing Amy. One sighting was by Canadian tourists in 1998 who said that they had seen a woman who resembled Amy and who had tattoos that matched hers on a beach in Curaçao. A member of the United States Navy said that he saw her in a brothel and said that she told him her name was Amy and she asked for help, saying she wasn't allowed to leave. The most recent alleged sighting comes in 2005 when a woman claimed she saw Amy in a department store in Barbados. Barbados. She said that Amy entered the restroom with three men who then threatened her if she didn't follow through on some sort of deal. The men left briefly and the witness said the woman turned to her, said that her name was Amy and that she was from Virginia and needed help, but the men returned right after to take her away again. This story is devastatingly sad and has so many turns and to this day no one knows exactly what happened to Amy or if these witness sightings are accurate at all. Number 10, Waterworld. Now if you've seen Avatar 2, this first one on today's list will get you pretty pumped. Could this be Jake Sully himself? Can we help him? What do we do? Can I be a big blue guy? Be a dream come true. Scientists have recently discovered a planet completely covered by ocean water. It's just one big blue ball floating in the sky. Now it sounds Sounds exciting and haunting all at the same time. I'm not a big fan of ocean, so this is just bad. Or space, I don't like either. This is a mix of both. It was first spotted by NASA's space telescope, TESS, which is the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, which, as its name hint towards, surveys the entire sky to find, hopefully, exoplanets around nearby bright stars. Some interstellar stuff going on there. Why do we need to know, right? Are we moving? Lo and behold, orbiting a star 100 light years from Earth lies a water planet in a habitable zone of space where its temperature would be just right for liquid water to exist on the surface and apparently might be a tropical paradise. I don't know, looks kind of fun. Astronomers have called TOI 1452b, that's the name of the planet, the best ocean planet candidate discovered so far. I don't know, should we move? I'm not a big fan of water. I don't, this sounds like the worst place for me. TESS observes a slight decrease in brightness of a star in a binary star system every 11 days and then after more than 50 hours of observation, they estimated the planet's mass at nearly five times that of Earth. So, yeah, it's massive. There's plenty of room for all of us to drown. Number nine, Slow Down. Let's come back to our world, shall we, for the next few? Slow Down was recorded on May 19th, 1997. Now, this signal was picked up in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, just in the middle of nowhere, which is the odd part here. See, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, they picked it up not once, but several times every year since its initial discovery. Now, our best guess as to what the sound is, is maybe, hopefully, moving ice in Antarctica. But the fascinating part here is that the sound decreases in frequency frequency over time. So something's changing, something's moving around. Like that fan up there, it's moving around. Something's in that fan. It's like a, there's a guy up there, I'm pretty sure. It takes about seven minutes in total, so we can't include the entire clip or else you'd be pretty bored in this video. But here's that clip 16 times as fast, so you know what we're talking about. believe that the sound is a massive iceberg scratching against the ocean floor over the course of that seven minutes until it came to a stop, which is pretty crazy. But the fact that we hear this sound every year, well, that's the weird part. That's why it's on this list today. Could it be the Kraken? Maybe it's from that episode of Spongebob where they're sliding that big rock. Good times. Number eight, sirens. AKA mermaids. Can they sing? Can they call out to sailors and make them do crazy stuff? Who knows? The mythology surrounding sirens, it's interesting, but I really don't think we have any Atlanteans flirting with sailors. You know what I mean? No one's getting catcalled by a mermaid. You know what I mean? It's not happening. On his first trip overseas back in 1493, Christopher Columbus claims to have seen not one, not two, but three sirens. He even wrote about it, he journaled. He said they rose well out of the sea, but they are not so beautiful as they are said to be. And he signed off, a little rhyme. What is that, Dr. Seuss? How disappointing, they're not that beautiful after all. 
Damn. I mean, when it comes to correctly identifying places and or people, obviously Christopher Columbus can get a little confused. We know this in history now. So historians believe that Christopher Columbus may have seen a manatee. Yeah, this guy's journaling about falling in love with not one, not two, but three manatees. He's like, ugh. I wish. If only they if only they loved me back. What an idiot. Yeah, Chris, those were manatees. Their skin is pink and fleshy, so I guess it's a fair mix-up. But, you know. Historically, sirens have been known to call out sailors, but, I mean, I don't think... This wasn't that case. Number seven, Quacker. Now, when I first read about this one, I thought it said Quaker the entire time, like the ground was perhaps splitting open, like an earthquake. That would fit in with this list, right? No, Mother Nature sending loud signals from below. Apparently, I was reading it wrong. The Quacker was heard during the Cold War. It was heard while Soviet Navy ballistic missile submarines were all heading through the North Atlantic and Arctic waters. Now, at some point, they heard quacking. Yeah, quacking, like a duck almost, some sort of deep ribbit. Now, whenever a submarine passed this specific area, this loud quack would come from deep below. It came from an object that was moving around. So that's the concerning part here. Was this a big duck? I don't think so. But what was it? That's the whole thing, right? I certainly hope it wasn't a big duck. The Soviets thought that they overheard secret US tech. You know, ah, the deep sea duck. I've heard rumors about this. We gotta get out of here. No, we have no idea. There were still no answers provided. Scientists currently believe that it came from a giant squid, which is way more terrifying than a duck. And it's also somehow more alarming than the ocean floor cracking open for me. I don't know. Cracking open, cracking, crack. Oh, shit. Number six, sounds of Mariana's Trench. Okay, hold your breath for this next one, folks, and turn the volume up. Why not? The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point on Earth's seabed. My ears are popping just thinking about this already. This is a nightmare. The Challenger Deep is, of course, located at the south side of the Mariana's Trench in the Pacific. Now, you may not witness this depression up close at any point in your life, but thanks to the internet, now you can hear it. Scientists recorded around 23 days of material on the ocean floor. And it's not just bubbles. It's more trouble. You know what I mean? It's, there's a lot going on down there. Only four manned missions have ever been this deep, the last one being 2012. Now the results here were pretty surprising, being as deep as they were. The sounds were honestly haunting. Oceanographer Robert Ziak was leading this project, and many of these sounds recorded were those from the surface. Which is a weird thing to say, but Hear me out. Sound travels quite a ways, and to quote Ziek, the ambient sound field is dominated by the sound of earthquakes, both near and far, as well as distant moans of baleen whales and the clamor of a category four typhoon that just happened to pass overhead. So yeah, it's a lot happening at once. Take a listen. Number five, mystery boom. Boom, 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 question mark? This one here was pretty recent. Early 2021 in San Diego, residents reacted to what sounded like a sonic boom. Windows were moving, doors were rattling. A lot of San Diego heard and actually felt this thing. But what was it? Many don't know. Nobody knows. At this point, many believe it was an earthquake. You know, being in San Diego and all, that wouldn't exactly be shocking. But this hits the point home even further. These residents here are used to earthquakes. This was entirely new. This was something they've never felt before, and obviously it was concerning. No earthquakes were reported at the time, and the Marines didn't speak up about anything. And if it was a sonic boom from a plane, well, they would have to tell you. And also, they're not allowed to do it that close to the coast. You can't sonic boom a family of four trying to have a beach day because you want to do some tests. That's not, that's not gonna happen. So, what was it? Our best guess is that this boom came from, you guessed it, the ocean, which is way more concerning than a thunderstorm or a jet. What's down there? What's rattling? Earthquakes? Kraken? I think it's the Kraken. Number four, the whistle. Who would have thought that a whistle would be terrifying? Me. Anything in the ocean's terrifying. That's why I thought so. Picked up by hydrophones, of course, as most of these insane things are commonly found in the depths of the deepest, darkest seas, was a whistle. Yeah, we actually don't know where this one even came from. See others on this list, we have some ideas. Certain radar points that we can look around in, maybe pinpoint some sort of idea, like that weird duck thing that was below. We had an idea. The whistle, though, well, that's a total mystery as far as location goes. Back in 1997, this was picked up and it came from, again, somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. Isn't that comforting? Just somewhere out there, anywhere. And this noise is a little similar to volcanic noises recorded in the Mariana Volcanic Arc, so that's our best guess, but still, no idea. This whistle got the attention of every single hydrophone, which is pretty impressive. It has to be one loud whistle. Can you whistle? It's always so impressive to me when someone can whistle. I can't hail a cab in New York at all. I'm like, 
gone. I missed it. Number three, Julia. Another normal name, another creepy underwater backstory. Here we go. Julia, let's talk about her. What did she do? Who is she? Back in March 1999, this noise here was recorded. Again, by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA for short. Now this time, the noise was heard across the entire Pacific Ocean and the entire hydrophone array. So across all that distance, this sound was carried. Another loud one. So whatever made this noise has to have some pretty powerful horsepower behind it. Now this noise is pretty long, again, and we can't include the entire clip, but some people out here really think that this is the Kraken or some sort of elder god, like Cthulhu or something. The point of origin is determined to be somewhere around Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair, which sounds both like locations from the Elden Ring, so I don't know what's going on over there at Cape Adair, but it's pretty frightening. This Cape Adair gets a lot of action, and we think it's because of icebergs, but again, there's no hard evidence here. Everything's slipping and sliding around. But what do you guys think? Is the Kraken's real name Julia? I vote yes. Number two, 52 hertz whale. I love whales. They're the closest thing to a dinosaur, in my opinion. They're underwater. They're like the nicest thing about an ocean. They're so soft and slow and beautiful. Also terrifying, but beautiful. Complex creatures. Complex creatures that we should leave alone, especially the 52 hertz whale. Definitely that one. What's going on? There's a documentary about this whale, specifically about their sound. Joshua Zeman made a documentary about, I'm not gonna lie, the loneliest whale on the planet. Sounds pretty depressing, and believe me, it is, but it's equally as interesting. See, for decades now, we've heard this sound, and now this film called The Loneliest Whale, The Search for 52, has people crying, but now we have some answers. How do we find the loneliest whale? And also, why is he so lonely? What did he do? What happened? We all deserve love. Back in 1989, the US Navy first detected the sound that measured in at more than twice frequency of a normal healthy whale call. So, it got their attention, right? What is this? Originally, what got them intrigued was the fact that this could have been a military mechanical sound, of course. Then they thought, well, maybe it's an animal because it's moving around a bit. Perhaps it's a hybrid dinosaur. We've never heard the sound. No, it's just a lonely, sad whale. But why is its frequency scaring away so many possible friends and mates? Well, we don't know. Again, maybe it can't whistle like me, that's why. And finally, number one, crop circles. We'll finish off with a cute one, I guess, why not, right? Although I'm arguing that this one is still pretty terrifying. Crop circles on the ocean floor. Aliens confirmed, my friends. They were first spotted back in 1995, right off the southern coast of Japan, and for 16 years, these things were blowing the minds of divers. And I absolutely can see this. Like, nobody knew where these signals were coming from. There would be one a week, just these weird symbols, these alien symbols, hieroglyphics underwater, and then the next week, they would be gone. Tiny aliens or cute tiny pufferfish. That's right, the latter. In 2011, one of these dudes got caught in 4K, and it's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. These male puffer fish, they try and lure in all these ladies by making art on the ocean floor. You know, some birds dance like crazy while some fish make art. Yeah, those are animals that we live with. Deal with it, I guess. The thing that baffles me here, concerns me really, if anything, is that the puffer fish uses a shell. Like he uses a tool to carve away his emotions. That's crazy. I don't know if fish could do this. I'm really blown away here. I'm not sure what this symbol means here, but it's signaling something. It's signaling maybe love. I don't know. We could all use some of that, no? Number 10, immortal jellyfish. The immortal jellyfish is a species of small, biologically immortal jellyfish found worldwide in tropical waters. Given the nickname immortal jellyfish for its ability to revert back to a polyp stage while it's starving or in danger and basically escaping death, researchers believe this jellyfish may hold the cure to cancer. Under normal conditions, its life cycle is divided into four parts. The union of the male and female gay meats produces a larva or planula. It then attaches to the seabed as a polyp, similar to an anemone. The polyps then release a fura or a young jellyfish into the phase prior to sexual maturity. They become jellyfish, reproduce sexually, and start over. But if they are stressed by an environmental threat, the jellyfish revert. After reproducing, they return to the previous phases, becoming polyps in the ocean floor again. As far as scientists know, jellyfish can repeat the process indefinitely. Thus, they are said to be biologically immortal. They can be eaten by a predator or fall into the hands of a swimmer, but they do not die of old age, which is pretty cool. Number 9. River at the Bottom of the Black Sea The Black Sea is one of the most isolated from the world's oceans, and there is a river flowing along the bottom of it. 
Now, it's just not a normal river. Oh no, it's complete with trees, leaves, and even waterfalls. One major difference is that the underwater river, when rounding a bend, moves in currents spinning the opposite direction from those on land. It has been an intriguing aspect of the ocean since it was found. According to scientists, if the river was on land, it would be the sixth largest river in the world in terms of the volume of water flowing through it. The discovery of the river announced on August 1st, 2010 was made by scientists at the University of Leeds and it is the first of its kind in the world. Number 8. The Mariana Trench In the western Pacific Ocean, you will find the deepest part of the sea. The Mariana Trench is deeper than the height of Mount Everest, 43 miles wide, and a massive 1,580 miles long, which is 5 times longer than the Grand Canyon. A certified US national monument, only small areas of the Mariana Trench have been explored. James Cameron reached the bottom in a submersible vessel Deep Sea Challenger in 2012 with the last successful attempt to search the ocean floor coming in 2020 when the Chinese submersible Fenduji made it all the way down. Several new species of underwater creatures have been discovered in the Mariana Trench, with most living on the surface of the ocean floor, including a type of sea cucumber. Explorers will find themselves in total darkness as they continue to understand what else lies in the deepest parts of the ocean and how marine life manages to survive. Number 7. Las Mahabali Param Pagodas The Las Pagodas was long considered a myth by many because of the lack of scientific evidence of its existence. But in 2004, when the infamous Indian Ocean tsunami hit, for a brief moment when the waters parted, large rock-like structures emerged from the water and were witnessed by many onlookers. The Las Mahabali Param Pagodas in India making it an incredible discovery. The remains of an ancient city were found in 2001 off the coast of India. Scientists retrieved many different items from the large city, including artwork, hand tools, fossilized bones, and pottery shards. What makes the discovery incredible is that the city is thought to be around 9,000 years old, which predates to the earliest Indian civilizations that sprung up 4,000 years ago. There is still not a lot known about this ancient city, as scientists and archaeologists continue to search the area for more clues and debate how old the city really is and who once inhabited it. But Wow. Number 6. The 2400 year old boat in the Black Sea Archaeologists working with engineers from the Black Sea Maritime Archaeology Project, aka MAP, have discovered a 23 meter shipwreck that has laid undisturbed for more than 2400 years. The find is believed to be the oldest intact shipwreck ever discovered. Thanks to the lack of oxygen in the Black Sea and the fact it was discovered a mile below the surface means it is exceptionally well preserved. The 75 foot vessel is thought to be ancient Greek. It still has its mast, rudders, and rowing benches. Speaking to the Guardian, Professor John Adams, the principal investigator with MAP, explained a ship surviving intact from the classical world, lying in over two kilometers of water, is something I would have never believed possible, and that it will change our understanding of shipbuilding and seafaring in the ancient world. The ship is thought to be a trading vessel, however, up to now, the design has only been seen on the size of ancient Greek pottery. The find is an archaeological first. The team have left the vessel untouched, apart from a small sample that was used to carbon date it by the University of Southampton. Number 5. $150 million of lost silver at the bottom of the Atlantic, for more than a century, a 150-year-old steamship had been found in 2003. The ship is the Republic, which sailed from New York in 1865, just after the Civil War, carrying 59 passengers and crew, and mixed cargo meant to help New Orleans recover from the war. About 100 miles off Georgia, battling a hurricane, it sank in waters a third of a mile deep. Its cargo of lost coins, experts say, may now be up to worth $150 million. That would make it one of history's richest treasure wrecks. It's a dream come true, said Dr. Donald H. Kagan, an expert on 19th century coins who is advising the company that discovered the wreck. There are piles of coins. The company Odyssey Marine Exploration of Tampa, Florida, who announced the find, said it hoped to retrieve all the coins. The company has retrieved more than 1,600 gold and silver coins, and none are dated later than 1865, tending to confirm the wreck's identity, said George Stem, the company 
company's director of operations. For some reason, even the silver coins are in great condition. Part of it is surely the physical environment down there, he said. The icy deep explorers are still finding can often preserve objects, even precious metals like silver that normally corrode easily. It's like finding a real treasure, and I would definitely like to receive some of those special coins. Number four, giant squid. The Kraken is a legendary sea monster of enormous size that is said to appear off the coast of Norway. Now, this is a mythical creature, but there is some truth to it. A giant squid was found on shore in Denmark in 1853. The giant squid is as elusive as the legend it inspired. It lives so deep underwater that we have limited information about it. However, we know it has the largest eyes of all living creatures, grows up to 18 meters, and is frequently hunted by sperm whales for food. The weaker giant squid generally flees when confronted by a whale, however it sometimes fights back when cornered and it's not unusual to find sperm whales with scars left from their battles with giant squids. It wasn't until the turn of the century in 2001 that humans saw the giant squid for the first time, and only a few years after that when it was finally photographed, making it one of the most elusive on the planet. The giant squid has long been known to exist, but capturing it on film has taken scientists extensive time and voyages to the deepest parts of the ocean where life is difficult to sustain. Number 3. Elongated Skulls Sacuayum is a cenote located in Mexico's Yucanta Peninsula. It is a place that locals feared and in 2012 a team of divers discovered the reason behind its fearsome reputation. An underwater survey discovered two chambers of the cenote littered with human bones, including deformed skulls. Archaeologists spent two weeks exploring the two chambers. The skulls belong to different Different sexes and ages, so they aren't thought to be sacrifices, which begs the question why are they buried deep underwater? Archaeologist Bradley Russell, who made the discovery, believes the dead may have been buried as some form of ritual or that they could be the victims of a plague that swept through the area. You wouldn't want them near the rest of the population, and you wouldn't want to drink the water either, Russell explained. Regardless, that's creepy. And why are the skulls elongated? Are they another species of human? I have so many questions. Number 2. Baltic Sea Anomaly in 2011, a sonar image was taken by Peter Lindbergh, Dennis Erberg, and their Swedish Ocean X diving team while searching for treasures on the ocean floor in the Baltic Sea. What the picture showed was a seemingly non-natural 200-foot circular object with passageways and stairs. The discovery looked like something out of a Star Wars film, and many people believed it was a spaceship that sank to the bottom of the ocean. Samples taken from the area in 2012 were given to Swedish scientists who said that there was nothing extraterrestrial about the area, but I'm not too sure about that. What Ocean X and the crew had found was weird, and many still think there is a UFO lying at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, and there's another expedition to the area planned soon. And coming in at number one is giant underwater pyramids. Off the coast of Portugal in the Atlantic Ocean is an anomaly that experts have been unable to fully understand or explain. Picked up by oceanic GPS technology, measurements of a structure were found, leading researchers to believe that two giant pyramids of ancient times sit underwater thousands of feet below the surface. The GPS data received back has the structures with a base of 8,000 square feet and about 150 feet tall, making these pyramids pretty giant in size. But there's very very little explanation into their existence, leaving it entirely up to speculation. Why would they be there? Is it another hidden city? Who knows? The pyramid has been underwater for about 20,000 years. Considering this is around the time of the last ice age where glaciation was melting from its peak 2,000 years prior, whatever civilization, human or not, that was around before the ice age could be responsible for building the pyramid. While the Portuguese navy still hasn't determined the origins, many might question why this hasn't been first reported sooner than late 2012. To further support the idea that this pyramid could have been built by different civilizations, archaeologists from the Portuguese Association of Archaeological Research have recently discovered evidence on Pico Island that suggests their belief that humans existed in the Azores region before the arrival of the Portuguese thousands of years ago. Kicking off the list at number 10, Selkies. Yeah, we'll kick this part two off with some Scottish mythology. How fun is that? Selkies were a load of fun. You would remember these ones if you saw them in person, definitely. Selkies were described as a sea lion almost in appearance, only there's a noticeable feature here that sets them apart. See, they can shed their skin and then take on the form of a human being. 
Nice, how lovely, we love it. Haggis and Selkies, all aboard. Let's go to Scotland, that's always fun. Their origins go back to the shores of Orkney and Shetland. <laughs> so Scottish, those names, I love it. Yeah, I live in Shetland. The weather's shite and over in Shetland. It's shite in Shetland. One tale is pretty haunting. I'm for sure counting this as a curse because, well, how else would you describe this scenario? When a female Selkie shed her skin once upon a time, a sailor captured her. He didn't know what he was in for at first because after he caught her, they, you know, thinking it was a fish, sea lion creature, they were then forced into marriage. Legally, I guess, by the sea? I don't know how curses work. If the Selkie were to ever find her skin, her original sea lion fish form skin, at that point her husband would pass away instantly and then she would be free to go back into the sea yeah it's like fighting Nemo 3 maybe that sounds like a decent plot the ultimate right swipe what a curse he's like ah, oh, I think I got a oh no it's a wife if you're ever fishing or sailing the high seas near Scotland anything that resembles a sea lion just don't go near it don't marry it okay don't go near her at all she'll take your house and your car and your kids you don't want any part of that smoke she'll take everything. Number nine, Roman seekers. The first century, a good place to begin with most things that are horrible. Let's talk about the Romans. The Romans did things a little different back in time. We can't figure out how they engineered aqueducts yet or how that many people watch Colosseum battles. I can't watch an arm bar on YouTube, let alone bring my family to the Colosseum. No idea how that happened, but they did it. Ancient Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder, he once wrote a book on natural history. And in this book, this go-to on ancient history that we still study and refer to in school, the Elder wrote about a half-human, half-fish creature that he called Nereids. Okay, he even added to this first observation detailing that the human parts of the body were covered in rough scales. Human in appearance, but still fishy nonetheless. The elder also recalls a sea man who would climb ships at night and sink them. Yeah, like Aquaman, only he doesn't help people. He just sinks your ship <laughs> and then you die in the sea. This is awful. Is he a curse? Is he a villain? Is this man like a super villain? I don't even know what to categorize this as. Curse, definitely a curse. Never going to sea again. Number eight, Kalua Papa. Heading over to the beautiful Hawaii for this one. Always wanted to go. Unfortunately, now I'll never go. Haunted villages are not my thing, but if it's yours, you're in for a treat. Let's talk about it. This was once referred to as the most cursed place on earth. Not bad, good in a resume. The coast of Malacca sounds like a good time and from Google Earth, it looks like a paradise, really. But for over 100 years, this was an isolation coast for patients with leprosy. Yeah, long before a cure or any idea of scientific knowledge was even a thing. That of course had to change sometime, the laws did in 1969. Right now, barely anybody is living on that part of the island due to his haunted past. Leprosy was considered a curse back then. Literally, I'm not even making that up. It was, that's all they thought it was. But even when help became available, some elderly patients stayed on the island. So a few thousand people were stuck on this island for almost 10 years. And some of them were like, I'm not even moving anymore. No, that's it. I mean, to be fair, yeah. You get forced to stay on an island. They're like, okay, you're good to go. You're free. It's like, no, we're, we're 97 now. We're done. Thanks. Enjoy the medicine. We're done. Number seven, Nuru. It's safe to say the last few years have been a little rocky. Our plans had to shift a little bit to say the least. Nuru, however, is a tiny island located in the southwestern Pacific. And they didn't have to shut anything down during this pandemic. If anything, their lives have just stayed the same. It's the world's smallest island nation. It was originally called Pleasant Island back in 1798 when Westerner John Fern first discovered it. It started out pleasant, I guess like most islands do, and then when humans get up close and start leaving garbage around, it all goes to the island's natural resource was phosphate, but overmining made the tiny island pretty much useless now, so now they consider it cursed because of its bad history. I'm like, nope, I think that's just humans getting a little greedy, but we'll call it cursed because it's an island and it's nice. Number six, Kai Islands. Back in 1943, Japanese soldiers were posted up on the Kai Islands in Indonesia. They claimed to have run into a singular mermaid numerous times. She would just flip around and say, what's up, hey. It's like my octopus teacher, only with a haunting mermaid instead. On the Kai Islands, multiple encounters with multiple mermaids are normal. The villagers referred to these creatures as Orang Iken. Orang translates to human, and Iken to fish. Human, fish mermaids. While on patrol, Sergeant Taro Horiba had instructed the village chief to pass on any information if anyone sees any of these things. Of course. Once I hear about this, I'd be like, yeah, can someone tell me if you see this? I would love to have a glimpse. Somebody saw one and they ended up capturing it. And then Sergeant Horiba recalls the mermaid as being around five feet tall and their skin was pinkish. Its face was human, but it had spikes around their head and its mouth was that of a fish's mouth. So pretty haunting and pretty hard to forget, I would say. This was 1943, so not that long ago, but again, the scientific community wasn't exactly sold yet. Nothing ever came from this, obviously, or else we'd hear from it. But weirdly, I believe this encounter. It's like when it comes to curses and areas, some are kind of fishy, pun intended. 
This one's believable. I don't know. A cart mouth is more believable than silvery blonde hair and flirting with you as you pass by. You know what I mean? If it's described as something haunting, I'll believe it. Number five, the Bermuda Triangle. Ah, the old classic. How cursed is this historical triangle? Do disappearances still happen today? Well, yes, definitely, absolutely. Are there the same amount of disappearances all over and not just that specific triangle in any way, shape, or form? Also, yes. The Bermuda Triangle, given the amount of volume it sees every year, does not see more shipwrecks per se, but back in the early 19th century, there was a few disappearances that I could see definitely being cursed. I could see why we'd avoid that one specific Illuminati-shaped area of the ocean. The USS Cyclops, for example, this was a historic one. So far, the leading theory on this ship's fate is a rogue wave, kind of like an interstellar, just a random, massive wave that just ruins everybody's day. But it's never been found, so we still have no idea to this day. The USS Cyclops went missing back in March 1918 in the Triangle of Doom. Sadly, there were no survivors. The wreck is still MIA. With many of these ships not even making a distress call, the tales are bound to follow. The cursed idea is bound to, you know, set in place. When it comes to sea curses were only just scratching the surface with the USS Cyclops. Later on in 1945, there was another incident. This one as well, pretty noteworthy, all things considered. Five torpedo planes went missing carrying 14 men. That was bad already, but the search plane that went looking for them also went missing in the same area. So cursed, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to call that. It's a pretty specific area, nonetheless. Number four, the Kraken. For ages now, sailors from Norway and Greenland have shared tales of a giant sea monster very specific one that they call the Kraken. It's got tentacles big enough to pull you out of your boat. So yeah, you'll remember it. You're gonna wanna talk about this. In 1857, Danish naturalist Jepeta Steenstrup found a large squid beak. And soon after, this man was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas. So everyone was on board. They were trying to figure this out as a community. So he concluded with all this evidence that the Kraken is very real. And it's part of a species of giant squid called Arthetusius ducks, which translates to ruling squid in Latin. Sounds very evil. Very little is known about giant squid in general. They're so hard to track, but when we did get a photo of one in 2005 and then a video of another in 2013, it's it's fitting the picture. Things are starting to connect. I don't know, some dots are connecting. Legend has it this thing is very real. Eyewitness reports from sailors describe a 60 foot long, tall, wide, huge, giant squid. Again, could have been one of these newly discovered giant squid, but who's really to tell? The sea is massive, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm open to this. I'm open to monsters and curses for sure. Number three, sirens, AKA more mermaids. Here we go. The mythology surrounding sirens is interesting, but I don't really think we have any Atlanteans flirting with sailors. I don't think that's a real thing, but Christopher Columbus might disagree. On his first trip overseas in 1493, Christopher Columbus claims to have seen not one, but three sirens. They followed him. He even wrote about it. He said they rose well out of the sea, but they are not so beautiful as they are said to be. Dr. Seuss guy, was he rhyming now all of a sudden? Who do you think he is? For their faces had some masculine traits. I think I would be a very cute mermaid. Thank you very much, Chris. I mean, I don't know what that means, okay. So what did he see? I mean, when it comes to correctly identifying places or people, obviously Chris can get confused. Yeah, he's not really the go-to guy. So historians believe Columbus may have seen a few manatees, which is even funnier now. He's like, yeah, mermaids aren't that attractive. Uh, Chris, those are manatees. Those aren't humans. He's like, oh, damn. <laughs> It's like, you thought they were a little attractive, Chris? Their skin is pink and fleshy, so that's a fair mix up, I guess. Not really cursed at all, but I'm like, yeah, it's the things that happen around all that is quite cursed. Number two, the Baltic Sea Anomaly. This one, uh, pretty cursed aliens, I don't know, somewhere in the middle, here we go. Back in 2011, divers accidentally discovered this 60 meter wide, 300 meter long entity. We'll say that or a rock, it's a, big, it's a big shaped rock. They found it 90 meters down in the Baltic Sea, right in the Gulf of Botnia. It's round in shape, so naturally people think this thing is a UFO that was lost many moons ago. The diving team returned, obviously, but they couldn't get a clear shot of it because there was interruptions. There was some mysterious electrical interferences when they tried to get close. A little odd right there. Those aliens in there have ad blocker or something. I don't know what's going on. Samples of the rock were studied and the Ocean X team gave them to a professor at Stockholm University. And among the samples were granite and sandstone. So do you guys think this is a natural rock formation? Kind of seems like it is here, but what's up with the, the failing technology around it? Is something else going on? Some say it's the Millennium Falcon. I don't know, the force is strong with this one. Number one, Atlantis. Of course we have to end on the lost city of Atlantis. What happened? Was the island cursed from the beginning? Is it a warning to the other islands near it? This map here is from 1664 and the creator of the map, Athanasius Kircher, who was a scholar who studied ancient Egypt and volcanoes, pretty historical resume, pretty accurate resume, all things considered. He also included an island that does not exist, or maybe once did and now it doesn't. He claimed the island was sourced from Egyptian maps, that he found a map in those archives 
and that's where he got it from. It wasn't like his idea or anything. This is starting to feel like national treasure a bit. I'm, I'm into this. The first story of Atlantis was written in 360 BC, and the description Plato gave was a lot different than how we would imagine a deep sea paradise city. He actually described it as an imperfect society. It was a cursed society, if anything, that had become corrupt by its own wealth. Atlantis is starting to sound a lot like Gotham City. I don't really think I want to go there anymore. Oh boy. Maybe that's why Batman and Aquaman, oh, now I'm getting it. Researchers have come to a conclusion that if this island was not underwater and it was still somehow on the surface, well, they'd probably be quite aggressive. Nothing like Disney's Atlantis at all. It would just be like those uncontacted tribes, realistically.